and what we uh, know will be their amazing future. Our first senior e show, Megan Fisher, daughter of KC, Casey and Kristen Fisher. And she's escorted by her parents. Logan Hurt, daughter of Dave and Dana Hurt. She is also escorted by her parents. Beckon Johnson, daughter of Mike and Diana Johnson. She is also escorted by her parents. Abby Matthews, daughter of RJ and Rachel Matthews, escorted by her parents. Hey man, can you hear me? Yep, yeah, you got Rust and you got AT. Let's uh, give us a minute and then get us on air. All right, thanks, buddy. Welcome in. Snow Canyon High School. There may be three games left in the season, but for Snow Canyon tonight is senior night. And last time these guys will take the floor in front of the hometown faithful here at the jungle. Rustin Burnside, Andy Thompson, ESPN 97.7 on CEC TV. You can catch us on air, catch us on YouTube, wherever you want to watch this game. This is one you certainly don't want to miss. It's the number two flyers on the road and the number four Snow Canyon Warriors in a rematch of what was one of the best games we've experienced so far this year, AT. Absolutely. In the hangar when these two teams faced off a couple weeks ago, Rustin, you were there. It was three quarters of nose-to-nose -nose basketball. Owen Mackey, the biggest star in region arguably this year, went off for three quarters, and then Dixie ran away from him in the fourth quarter. Different atmosphere here tonight in the jungle. There wasn't a parking spot in all of Santa Clara trying to get into this game between these two programs. Awesome fan bases as they celebrate senior night here. But absolutely, the number four ranked team in the state versus the number two ranked team in the state. Can't wait. You got Dixie Snow Canyon here on ESPN 97.7 over on Fox Sports Utah 101.9. Andy Griffin, Carrick Segmiller bringing you the action. Cedar taking on the Pineview Panthers out in the pit. Hurricane at Crimson Cliffs is the other Region 10 game of the night. But I have a feeling a lot of eyes on this one right here in Santa Clara. AT, when you talk about everything these teams have been through, both have had their ups and downs, but Snow Canyon has gone through a little more than Dixie. You look at the Warriors in the regular season, they went to that tournament that was out of state, and they ended up playing some really tough teams from different areas. Had a couple losses that didn't make their record and their RPI look near as pretty, but Coach Meacham would tell you that they learned a lot of valuable things from a tournament like that, and then you look at them in region play, and they're sitting 7-2 and two on the year. Absolutely. That Arizona tournament, they lost three times. I think Coach Meacham, his, his philosophy is what you just said. We'll go and we'll lose, but we'll play some really good teams. They lost to Leighton Christian in the out-of-region out of schedule. Leighton Christian's seventh right now in the RPI. They lost to Logan in the out-of-region schedule. But in region, only one loss with Mackey on the floor. That was to Dixie. They lost to Crimson Cliffs a week ago, but that was when Owen Mackey was sitting out with an ankle. So this has been a, a, a tremendous team who has rebounded from losing two of the best guys in the state, Bowen Hammer and Lyman Simmons, who transferred in the offseason to other programs. But they picked up really, I think, a lot better than a lot of people thought they would with the team-oriented style. Even with a guy like Owen Mackey, Rustin, who's averaging about 25 points a game, this is a, a true team who's moving the ball around and has an unselfish leader in Mackey who doesn't ever ball hog or force a shot. You're absolutely spot on. And Mackey, number one in the 4A classification when it comes to scoring the basketball. In fact, tonight's matchup will feature two of the best to do it. You have Mackey on one end. You have Lemke on the other. That's number one and number two in the 4A classification. And some of the seniors being honored tonight here at the Jungle. We already saw Bear Levitt go on through. Some other names you're going to see. Robbie Christensen, Luke Hamlin, Cy Meacham. These are all contributors to this varsity squad. Bear Levitt just went 
on through. You'll see Will Warner, Carter Murdoch, as well as, ah, that should do it. Carter Murdoch should be the last senior on this squad that has dealt with turnover incredibly well. And on the flip side, on the road, you have the Dixie Flyers who have not lost in region play. 8-0 on the year, 18-2 overall. Dixie's losses, of course, coming to a good Farmington team. They come to Real Salt Lake Academy. Two really good squads. The Flyers, don't worry, they've been tested. They've been through plenty of ups and downs. They've had their one-point games, one-possession games. Crimson's nearly got them. Desert Hills has nearly got them. Snow Canyon, not too long ago, nearly got them in the hangar as well. But somehow, some way, they always find uh, some outcome to end up on top. And Snow Canyon hoping to snap that streak on their home floor tonight on senior night. It's going to be an incredibly fun matchup. Mackey had 31 last time they squared off. Roberts had 29 last time that they went at it. And you're not going to want to miss any of the action here on ESPN 97.7 and CEC TV. Let's do this. Let's take a two-minute break here on your Ideal Home and Paint Game of the Week, and we'll be back with our Camping World Keys to the Game here on your Bucks Ace Hardware pregame show, where you can stop by Bucks Ace today for power tools, grills, and the best gun department. Bucks locations at Dino Crossing, Santa Clara, and Hurricane. Two-minute break. We'll be back. Welcome back to the jungle. We got a packed house here in Santa Clara, Utah. It's the Warriors, the Flyers getting ready to square off in their second meeting of the Region 10 schedule. Only a couple weeks remain in the regular season. And when you check out everything, the standings go as this. Dixie on top with an 8-0 record. Snow Canyon right behind them at 7-2. Oh, what a win would do for the Warriors' chances to potentially win a Region 10 crown as the Flyers are in that driver's seat. Crimson 6-3, Desert Hills 5-4. Pine View 2 and 6, Cedar 2 and 7, and the Hurricane Tigers sit number 7 at 0 and 8. And the RPI, Dixie's number 2 right now, Snow Canyon's number 4. The season's gone on long enough. We know these teams well enough. There's really not a lot of wiggle room in the RPI at this point of the year, right, AT? But I have to imagine if Snow Canyon got a victory tonight, well, that number 3 spot where Ridgeline currently sits, that number 2 spot where Dixie currently sits, it could go a long way in helping them potentially move up uh, and maybe secure a bye in yeah. the very first game. So that's what the Warriors have to look for. For Dixie, it's all about protecting what you currently have and what you've worked to get towards this point in the season. Yeah, Dixie only two losses on the year to Farmington and to uh, Salt Lake, Rail Salt Lake Academy. 
And they've been tested a little bit in Region 10, including the game against Snow Canyon in the first part of the region schedule against Desert Hills. Yeah. And, and maybe a, a game or two others. But most of the time, they, they're winning comfortably. Tonight is not going to be comfortable at all. It never no. is in the jungle. And the whole town's here. Santa Clara, Dixie people are, are crowding in, filling up. It'll be standing room only. And I anticipate a really close down to the wire game between these two teams. Well, last time that these squads matched up, it was a Dixie victory, but that was courtesy of a 19 to four fourth quarter advantage for the Flyers. I don't know if Snow Canyon's gonna let that happen to them again. They led, I'd say probably 80%, 85% of that ball game out in the hangar. So we'll see what adjustments have been made. Snow Canyon, of course, coming off that win in Cedar. It was a five point victory for the Warriors. They were paced by Owen Mackey in his 30 points. Will Warner poured in 12 and Cy Meacham had 11 with three triples that he knocked down. And then for Dixie, they're coming off that victory against the Pineview Panthers. It was a 65-42 win for the Fly Boys, and uh, that helped them get to where they are at 8-0 in region play. Let's do this, AT. Let's jump into our Camping World keys to the game so we can focus a little bit on our Star Watch player. We know Lemke's out there. We know Mackey's out there. Maybe he'll have a wild card for us. But before we do that, let's talk about what it's going to take to get it done. Remember your 2023 adventures. Start at Camping World. Go visit them. Check them out online. Whatever it is, that's where adventure starts. It's where it lives. Camping World St. George. Let's start with the visiting team on the road, potentially slight favorites, the Dixie Flyers. All right, for the Dixie Flyers, last time they played, we've talked about it, Owen Mackey was awesome, but he was awesome as a jump shooter in particular. He made five threes in that yes. game, Rustin, uh, in the first three quarters, and a lot of them were just off the bounce, pull-up threes from deep. So Dixie, who is awesome on the perimeter, jo uh, John Southwick, Jordan Roberts, um, Carter has been awesome all year long. They've got to be aggressive running Meacham off the three-point line and being aware of it. He'll pull up at any time bringing the ball up the floor. How many times he's actually going to be bringing the ball up the floor is we'll, we'll see. He's been a lot of, a lot of uh, minutes this year as a post player, but they can't let him get going with this crowd in the first half making 25-foot jump shots, which he's well capable of. Number two for the Flyers is the transition game. We know how awesome Dixie is, creating turnovers, Grant Carter taking it coast to coast and finishing, getting a bunch of live ball turnovers and transition buckets. Snow Canyon's really dang good at that too. Will Warner and Owen Mackey are killers in the transition game, so Dixie's got to limit live ball turnovers. In the first matchup, they played only seven turnovers by Dixie. That was a huge win. Snow Canyon only had seven turnovers in that game as well, so it was a really tight, crisp, well-executed game, uh, and I hope we have something like that too, where 14 total turnovers in a high school game is, is pretty excellent. And, and just to add to your point there, AT, that's excellent because in steals in the 4A classification this year, Will Warner is number one with 49. Grant Carter's number mm. two with 45. And then Owen Mackey's seventh yeah. in the 4A classification with 33. So you're spot on there. And you mentioned running guys off the line. Meacham's a 40% three-point shooter. Mackey just a titch below that. That's going to be pivotal uh, for these squads. And then... Do you have any other keys on top of yeah, that? Yeah, let's do let's do Snow Canyon. I think I think Meacham, man. I think Cy Meacham when Owen was out against Crimson Cliffs and he was the dude. Yeah. Remember how aggressive he was and how he was looking for his shot. He wasn't just a facilitator. He was going to the rim. He was going to the free throw line. He was making threes. He doesn't have to be that the primary guy because you got Owen here who's going to score thirty plus tonight probably. But he, he can't do what he did last time against Dixie, which I think he was one for five from three. You mentioned he's a 40% 40 40 three-point shooter. He's got to make two, three, four threes tonight to help Owen Mackey. Yeah. He can't have less than 10 points if they're going to get over the top against Dixie because game one against the Flyers, Owen played a perfect game. Yes. And you it's still, and you still lost because Dixie's that dang good. So... Um, it's going to take Will Warner. It's going to take Cy Meacham and those guys to, I to would make mention, some shots. I would mention Luke Hamlin, too, also Luke good Hamlin. at putting the ball on the floor as well. I, th I think you're spot on there because it's so easy to fall into the mold of we're a three-point shooting team. Let's take tough, contested shots. Those guys can help out by doing what you just mentioned. And then the other thing is defensively, we've talked about the shooting of Snow Canyon. Dixie, we're seeing Southwick over there in the corner. Brecken Robinson has been lights out from three. And when you have a magnet like Lemke, I don't know how you guard this team. Yeah. You can't cover him one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's Mackey or whether it's Bear Levitt. You go into the Lemke, 
collapse, and then you've got to figure out a way to get your rotations right where guys like Jordan Roberts, who we think of as a facilitator, but he can shoot the lights out. Um, so can Southwick and so can Brecken Robinson. So you've got to be about even with Dixie, I think, on the three balls tonight or maybe even a few more here at home to get to fall because this would be an upset. It's a it's the two seed versus the four seed, but Dixie is the cream of the crop in Region 10. They proved that only two losses undefeated in Region play. If you're going to pull off the upset, you've got to you've got to do those things. Flyers certainly the team with an X on their back as we draw towards the end of the regular season. Region play gear up for these teams to go on a title chase. And you talk about Roberts, 29 points in the hangar last time these guys faced. Yeah. You also had Southwick, who you brought up in your keys to the game. He had a rough outing, only three points in that ball game. A little bit of foul trouble. I don't expect that same type of player tonight. We've seen what he's done on the year and how special he can be at times. So I do expect to turn around there and we'll see what carries over with the Dixie Flyers from the first time these teams played. And that's what's beautiful. You go and you look at the last game and you think you know everything and you think you know what works and what doesn't work. Don't think that Coach Roberts and Coach Meacham have not made insane changes, things that you wouldn't recognize from the first time they played. Now, you don't want to go away from your bread and butter, but these guys are smart. They know that film has been a high priority all week long. Guys have been watching it nonstop. Expect a couple wrinkles here and there because that's the type of two coaches that these guys are. And they faced off not only a month ago, but in the state championship last season. So uh, very respected and very capable from that from the sidelines is what I'll say about those two. Absolutely. I w think way too long of a shoot around, by the way. Yeah, uh, senior night, baby. Yeah. Add, add a couple minutes to the clock is now dwindling under 20 seconds. Oh, it Good stopped habit. at 19. Our first action of the night. <laughs> Stops at 19. The American flag drops down here above the interlocked SC. We're getting ready for our national anthem. Let's go ahead and do this before we get ready for our star watch brought to you by Intermountain Sports Medicine and our starting lineups. Let's take a two minute, 30 second break for the national anthem. That's two minutes, 30 seconds. We'll be back with the Dixie Flyers sitting at number two and the number four Snow Canyon Warriors Region 10 basketball on ESPN 97.7. Thank you. 
Welcome back. It's time for the starting lineups here at the jungle. Snow Canyon Dixie getting ready to tip. Clock has hit zero. We're officially done with shoot around as the Flyers introduce their starting lineups brought to you by Bucks Ace Hardware. Stop by today. Power Tools Grills, best gun department. You're listening to the ideal home and paint game of the week. Starters early on for Dixie. John Southwick goes and fist bumps the officials. They've already announced Brecken Robinson, Grant Carter next in line for the Flyers. And then, of course, you're going to see big man Kyle Lemke wearing number 12, second highest scorer in the 4A classification. He and Mackey score in entirely different ways, but they're both just as entertaining to watch. And then, of course, Jordan Roberts, the last starter for that Flyboy unit. Absolutely. Lemke is so valuable, and it's going to be tough when coaches and everybody has to vote for who the heck the MVP is this year. I think Mackey has the edge right now, but you've got Lemke, best player on the best team, and this game is going to go a long ways, I think, into determining those postseason accolades. You look at the Dixie Flyers and what they've done this year. Jordan Roberts, 11.6 points a game. Lemke, 20.4. Southwick, 9.2. Robinson, 13.5. Carter, 8. Point nine. Welcome to the jungle. Blairs over the loudspeakers here in the jungle as the hometown faithful get welcome, get ready to welcome their Warriors. First off the bench to a big round of applause. The senior on senior night wearing number two, Luke Hamlin. Yeah, Hamlin has been, uh, you know, exactly what they needed this year. Just got a few minutes last season in bit parts. Yeah. Coming this year, he can shoot it. Always going to make the right decision on the perimeter. Passing the ball doesn't turn it over. Exactly what Coach Meacham needs in that spot. Joining him in the backcourt where number three, Cy Meacham, a 40% three-point sniper on the year. Also a top assist man. We talked about him getting in passing lanes, creating steals. Big man Bear Levitt, he's up off the bench next. He provides key paint protection, couple big blocks. He's just under five a game. And then the superstar safety, Will Warner, committed to Snow College. He's also a menace on the basketball floor. And the crowd roars like crazy for number 24, Owen Mackey, just a junior, but leading the whole state in scoring this year and trying to get the biggest win of the year for Snow Canyon here at home. Well, check out how even these teams are just in leaders. We talked about Mackey and Lemke being number one and number two in scoring. Three-pointers made, Meacham's three at 44, Robinson's four at 40, Mackey's eight at 36. Rebounds, it goes Lemke and then Mackey. All these guys have even components throughout the roster. We'll see who rises to the occasion in this rematch that Dixie ended up sneaking away out at the hangar. We're gearing up for tip on the interlocked SC here in Santa Clara, Utah. At the jungle, Bear Levitt, Kyle Lemke going to jump it up at tip. Tapped by Levitt, but it ends up in the hands of Southwick and Dixie. will have the first possession of the ball game as the arrow points their way. Lemke gets it up top, swings over to Roberts. Roberts moves it around to Southwick, over to Grant Carter. He's coming off a Southwick screen before he kicks it back to Lemke. Now Roberts has it in the corner. Hesitation dribble, drives baseline. Luke Hamlin was there, knocks it away. It's last touch by Roberts. Nice job by Hamlin. He was rifling it out to Carter on the perimeter, who is open for three. It goes off Hamlin, then hits Roberts as he's standing out of bounds for the first turnover of the game. If you're watching on CEC TV, the communication, er, community education channel, you just saw Hamlin drop down big time. Ball IQ play for Hamlin. And now Snow Canyon has it. 0-0 early on, 7.30. Mackey, contested jumper. He got the shooter's bounce as they hit the rim. Went up and over, over John Southwick. That was great defense by Southwick. Put a hand up in his face. If that type of shot is going to bounce in for Mackey tonight, that is a good omen for the Warriors. <laughs> Got off to that hot start when they played in Dixie, had 31. Lemke in the post, one-on-one -on -one against Levitt. Can't get it to go. Meacham has the rebound. Warriors pushing the pace. Right hand dribble, switches over to the left, kicks out to Bear. Bear hit a three against uh, in that win against Cedar. Won't take one there, however, as he gives it back to Will Warner, and the Warriors will set. Yeah, great contest on the defensive side by Bear Levitt. That's a battle of Titans down low. Snow Canyon, one of the few teams in Region 10 with a guy big enough to match up with Lemke. 2-0, Mackey coming off a bucket, thought about another contested instead, kicks out to Hamlin, that shot does not touch rim, it bounces off of Bear Levitt's head and goes up and in. Oh my god. Do, do I give that to Bear? The Jose Canseco. All right, Bear Levitt with the <laughs> putback is what we'll call it. That absolutely worked out for the Warriors. 
Brecken Robinson gets it on the wing inside to Lemke. Lemke had an opportunity. Warner comes down, bothers the shot, and now it's Mackey on the run. Mackey over to Meacham, 40% three-point shooter, hesitates, won't take it. Drives inside to the paint before dribbling back out top, and the Warriors will reset the offense. Yeah, that was a good look for Meacham. He should have pulled the trigger. He's got to be more aggressive in positions like that because he can knock that down. Levitt continues to move the ball around up top before giving it to Hamlin on the left wing. Hamlin back to Bear. Thought about a three for a split second. Gives it to Warner. Warner steps away from a Levitt screen. Had an open look. Won't fall. Ball batted around. Roberts tips it forward to Grant Carter. Dixie somehow has possession as Luke Hamlin fouls Carter from behind. Really good hustle play there by Will Warner to try to corral that offensive rebound. And then the foul on Hamlin. They're doing a great job on Lemke defensively, making everything difficult for him. They got the over-the-top pass that they completed, but Warner flew in there and helped out Levitt so he couldn't get the easy layup. That's the big challenge. You front him, it's a problem. You get behind yes. him, it's a problem. You need two guys to always have eyes on number if, 12. If I'm Coach Roberts, I'm comfortable with both looks Lemke's had so yeah. far, but Snow Canyon doing an excellent job helping. Warner came down on that last one using that expertise he has as a star safety on the football squad. Dixie looking for their first bucket of the ball game. Grant Carter has it in the corner. Inside, Lemke, post move, Meacham poked it away out of bounds. It'll stay with the Flyers, but that's three tries for Lemke and three X's. And Lemke can't believe there wasn't a foul on Meacham coming over and knocking the ball away out of his hands as Bear was late getting over the top. Here comes, here comes Mackey. Mackey steals the inbound, passes to Hamlin. Outside of Hamlin's left hand, it sells out of bounds off of Hamlin's fingertips. Right idea, not the right pass, but great, great front on the inbound play to even get the steal in the first place. We've seen some amped up plays early in this game. Yep. The long shot by Hamlin that missed everything. That one a little out of sorts. There's so much energy in this arena right now, and the players are being affected by it. Energy all the way through the jungle. Here's a steal. Roberts, rare turnover. Mackey picked his pocket. Hamlin the other way. Hangs and hits on the left side of the rim with the right hand, Jay. Great composure there by Hamlin to respond after the long miss to come down and keep your body in control, in traffic, and finish. Very impressive job there. Carter. Trying to get Dixie's first points. Runs into a wall that is Will Warner. He's able to kick it back out to Robinson. Left-hand dribble. Drives baseline. Tries to kick to Southwick. The Warriors drop down on it. The pass flies out of bounds. And that's the second time they're driving baseline. And Snow Canyon's doing an excellent job being aware of where the passer is down underneath the basket and getting between him and the guys on the perimeter and deflecting the ball. Awesome job by Snow Canyon. I'd bet you good money that Dixie has not seen the first three minutes of a ball game go by without at least one bucket. Yes. Warriors defense showing up early on. Hamlin, opportunity for the Warriors to extend the lead. Ball ends up to Warner before it goes back to side. Bear now controls and sets a screen for Hamlin off the pass. Hamlin inside, draws three. Out to Mackey. Mackey, a quick pump fake, gives it to Warner. Warner off the dribble, inside, hangs, and off the back of the rim. Rebound fought for. Damon Myers was there, Bear Livett was there, and it looks like we're gonna have a jump ball, ET. Love it, great job by Bear. Dixie may have wanted it over the back, but I think it was clean. We'll That's see here on the replay for our TV audience. It looks like he grabbed the ball to me. <laughs> Everybody's got a different opinion, right? <laughs> Bear Levitt gets the baseline inbound. Mackey, corner, Warner pump fix a three. Gets Myers turned around before he swings it across to Meacham. Snow Canyon will wait for things to kind of establish. Every time I'm out here at the jungle, I don't think the shot clocks are ever on. And that's the case again tonight. Yep. Love it over to Warner. Three minutes, 50 seconds on our Nets on Fire clock. Meacham contested three, nearly dropped. Ball batted around, controlled by Roberts. Roberts right hand dribble, crosses over to the left. Hangs outside as he kicks to Carter, nothing there. Carter now moves it over to Wilden. Wilden just checked into the game, his three off the front of the rim. No good, and we have a foul after the shot on the rebound attempt. Yeah, it's going to go against Levitt, I believe, who was trying to scrap to get in position to get the rebound. Uh, let's see, you get Wilden here with the attempt. See that hit the right side of the rim, roll over, and yeah, they're going to give Bear Levitt his first personal. Wilden hanging inside, too strong. Mackey has the rebound. Warriors with a 6-0 lead. Under four minutes to play here in the first. Warner gets in the corner, 
and then kicks it back to Cy. Cy gets instructions from Coach Meacham before giving it to Will Warner, who dribbles right next to the C in the interlocked SC here in the jungle. Hamlin now gets it on the left wing. He'll give it to Will Warner. Warner working off a Levitt screen. Inside, Lemke steps down to help. Thought about giving it back to Bear and step back to Mackey. Mackey has the ball. I don't know if it was poked away or if he just lost it, but Dixie controls. Carter now with it to Roberts. Flyers still looking for the first points. Lemke one-on-one inside. Levitt contesting. Got it the first time. Lemke gets his rebound, goes back up, and puts it through. Yeah, first bucket of the game for Dixie. It's been really tough going for Lemke down there. Not getting foul calls. Levitt's doing an excellent job. And that time did a good job, but Lemke was just persistent and stayed with it. Will then just ran into Bear Levitt, and he's going to pick up his first personal. Bear trying to set a screen, absorbs contact, and it'll stay with the Warriors. And now with Bear Levitt going to the bench, we'll see if Coach Roberts takes advantage of Lemke on the offensive end. Christensen, Murdoch, two defensive specialists in the game right now for the Warriors. Mackey gets the inbound right around the free throw line. Gives it to Warner baseline who brings it back outside. Mackey swings it over. Carter Murdoch, three up and through for Carter. Big time hit as he gets his first bucket of the ball game. Bullet pass from Mackey. That was 100 miles an hour. Nice rhythm catch and shoot by Murdoch. Nine to two is your score here at Snow Canyon High School. Myers. Over to Breck and Robinson. Robinson has yet to attempt a shot. Kicks corner to Myers. Swings it back to Wilton. Over to Roberts. Roberts hesitates. Runs into two Warriors. Not a lot of room there, and it's blocked by Murdoch. Lemke comes up with it after the block and puts it up and in. Tough finish from Lemke after that play seemed to break down. Great defensive effort by Snow Canyon. They are rotating on shooters so fast that Dixie has no open looks. Really good block, and then... Lemke showing off the touch on the baby hook. Lemke has all four of Dixie's points. Snow Canyon sitting at nine, a minute 37. Mackey dribbles into a tough pull up. Jay knocks it through, and the Warriors are the first to double digits. And Mackey's, I think, is only his second field goal yes. attempt, which shows you how he lets the game come to him. He doesn't force anything, and that's why his team has the lead right now. Roberts bumped by Warner, threw one up because he thought he was fouled. He wasn't, but the ball still goes through. Tough finish from Jordy Roberts, his first bucket of the ball game. Warner now with it. Approaching one minute to go here in the first. 11-6. Flyers slow offense has slowly started to come alive. Warner tripped up by Damon Myers as he tried to work around a Nolan Mackey screen. I think Myers is going to be called for his first personal foul. He was tripping, stumbling, falling. What's that one song? How does it go? See him tripping, stumbling right oh, here, yeah. and he kind of reaches out, grabs Will yeah, Warner, yeah. and he's going to be called for the personal. Yeah, Warner's doing a good job attacking tonight so far. Under a minute officially now. Meacham works around a quick Mackie scream. Mackie pops corner. Mackie pulls, contested three. Won't fall. And he looks a good look for Owen Mackey. That one wouldn't drop as Carter, the lefty, pushes it forward. Gives it out to Wilden. Wilden thought about a mid-range. Instead, back beyond the perimeter. Brecken Robinson ends up with a three in the corner. Nothing there. And off the Warner rebound. Cy, crossover, takes Carter almost to the cup. Stops at the last minute, gives to Christensen. Out to Will Warner. Warner sets his feet for three. Down it goes, Will Warner. Bingo for Warner. That was from way downtown for the Warriors. Nice look there by Murdoch. Warner, Mackey, Levitt, Hamlin. All these guys have scored for Snow Canyon. 13, 12, 11. Yeah. Clock continues to tick, tick, tick for the Flyers. They're going to hold for the last shot. Down 14-6 here in the first. Carter sweeps, right-hand dribble inside, tries to find Lemke. Lemke takes on two Warriors and throws it down. Christensen was out of place, and Lemke makes him pay. The mustachioed monster points over to his uh, student section, shows the, the ability to catch, and the quick twitch muscles in his legs go up off two feet and throw down. Game got a little more even as we went on, but the Warriors defense came to play 14-8. Snow Canyon on top. We're going to take a 45-second break. Be back with the second quarter.
Well, you can chalk Snow Canyon's 14-8 lead up to a couple things. First and foremost, the defense coming out strong, being aggressive, getting in passing lanes, muddying things up for the Flyers. And then the ball distribution, Hamlin, Levitt, Warner, Murdoch, Mackey all scoring for Snow Canyon as we start the second quarter with Grant Carter trying to get inside. He kicks out to Brecken. Brecken's three won't fall. Lemke, first offensive rebound that I can remember of this ball game. And now Roberts with another opportunity. His pass for Lemke, a little wild, uncoordinated. It's saved in the corner by Robinson. He gives it back to Grant up top. Grant with a hop step inside. Picks the ball up. No one home before he finds Roberts up top. Flyers offensive possession to start the second. They're trying to find Lemke. Levitt hits the deck, gets back up. And the ball swings to Roberts up top who knocks down the three. Big time shot from Jordan who hasn't had any look so far this game. Knocks down a big three to cut it to a one possession game for the Flyers. Roberts now at five. He had that layup that he threw up when he was bumped. Mackey stops on a dime. Step back Jay won't fall. Rebound to Levitt over to Hamlin. Hamlin's three pointer won't fall. He's 0 at two. Dixie pushing the other direction with Roberts. Right hand swings it out. Robinson pump fake inside. Pulls up with the right hand, had an open look, can't get it to drop, and now it's Snow Canyon the other direction. Yeah, just short-armed it a little bit. Good look for Brecken, and good job in transition finding him there by Roberts. One of those moments where you go to pull up, and you're like, maybe I'm too open right now. You get a little uncomfortable, cold feet, as that shot went off the back iron. Three-point ball game. Warner sets his feet for three. Had one earlier. It was a good screen from Levitt, a good look from Warner, but it won't fall. Yeah, really nice look set up. Caught it, beautiful release, just a little bit long. Under seven minutes to go. In fact, we're at 614. Carter inside, had a look at a layup, saw Mackey come down to help, decided to kick it out. Ball continues to whip, and as it whips around, Southwick ends up canning a three. And that's the flyer ball movement, ping pong, back and forth. Ball doesn't stick right into the hands of John Southwick for a beautiful wide open rhythm jump shot it all happened with grant carter getting inside southwick had three points last time these guys played he's already at three here in the second quarter warner right hand dribble skips one over to carter murdoch ball continues to whip around as hamlin sends it back to will warner Mackey calling for a bear levitt screen points with the right hand right hand dribble levitt hits the deck once again and again bear levitt's going to draw a foul as he sets a pick yeah, on the perimeter, Bear Levitt's been really active and physical tonight, which is exactly the type of game they needed him to play. He's been excellent. He got Wilden on one. He got Damon Myers trying to fight over one, and now he gets John Southwick all with one personal apiece. Mackey at the volleyball line, has the hand above his head, drives inside. Beautiful bounce pass to Levitt. Levitt couldn't control it. He's bounced back outside the block. He tries to swing it over to Warner. It goes too high for Warner out of bounds. Excellent job cutting off the dribbler. Mackey, who is driving to the basket there by John Southwick. That is a tough job. You know, you have Lemke behind you, which helps, but great footwork by Southwick. A 6-0 run to start the second. Has us tied at 14 apiece here in the jungle. Roberts trying to cross over. Hamlin was stuck all over him. Dixie finally tries a lob inside to Lemke. It goes out of bounds. Last touch by Lemke. Levitt had him fronted, and the pass was a little too high, it seemed. Yeah, and Lemke's saying he's grabbing me on those throws, those lobs over the top, but just not getting those calls. Hey, grabbing in the post is encouraged as long as you're not caught, right? That's what I'm saying. Cy Meacham gets the ball. Warriors looking to go back up on top after Dixie's tied it at 14 apiece. Mackey over. Meacham, three ball on the way, in and out. That ball looked like it was going to drop. Instead, takes a hard rattle, and now Roberts the other direction. Roberts, oh, oh, beautiful pass. He flicks it behind the back, and Lemke finishes with the right hand oh push. Oh, my. I thought he was driving into a dead zone, and he makes the pass of maybe the year for an easy finish for his big man. Little Jason Williams action going on here in Santa Clara. What a find from Roberts. Dixie with their first lead of the ball game, 16-14. Meacham driving inside. The Flyer defense a little more motivated now. Mackey trying to go to work against Southwick. Southwick just a sophomore, able to stay in front. Warner now drives after getting the ball. Back out to Mackey. Mackey pulls for three off the front of the rim, and Brecken Robinson has it. Yeah, the, the long ball not on right now for Mackey. He's missed a couple of them, and it, it's so difficult for him to get anything towards the basket. Dixie's doing a great job this game compared to last 
in containing him early, yeah. early going here at the jungle. Don't get us wrong. Mackey can hit contested shots, does it all the time, but you'd much rather prefer he takes a contested shot. Outside, Carter in the paint to Southwick. It was a good look from three. He won't fall. Levitt fighting for the rebound. He goes down, able to get rid of that ball to Hamlin before being called for a travel. He felt there was contact there. Levitt now fakes, drug that foot before he took up with the ball. Official gets him for the travel. Tough turnover there, right, for Snow Canyon, A.T. The Warriors, they've stalled here in the second quarter. Big first quarter, put up 14 points. Defense is on top of it. And right now, it's been a 8-0 advantage for the Flyers with 3.30 over there on our Nets on Fire clock. Yeah, Bear is uh, putting it all out there. The effort is there. He's getting a little breather now as the young sophomore comes in. Here's Carter, takes it all the way in with the left hand. Carter Campbell with a big time block in his first minutes. Meacham now trying to capitalize off the Campbell block. He's going to search baseline. Campbell inside. Lemke comes over to help and he decides to kick it out. Mackey to the rim, contested by Lemke. And something had to give. The official decided that Lemke had a little too much contact. Awesome job by Campbell coming in the biggest game of his young career. First possession. He makes the block for the Warriors, and then Mackey on the other side finally gets a seam to attack. Looked like he was ready to take off. Good contest by Lemke and fouling him. Otherwise, this whole place would have erupted with Snow Canyon fans going crazy. You get a great look at that crossover here, courtesy of CEC TV. Gets inside, draws the foul, misses the first free throw, makes the second. That's the first free throw attempts we've had in this ball game. Last time they played, Dixie had a 21-9 free throw advantage and that's the first time we've seen free throws at all brought to you by fabulous freddy's now yeah, we'll see if campbell and one-on-one -on -one right now with lemke in the post roberts bumped able to tiptoe on the baseline swings it over to carter trying to go inside to lemke it's campbell on lemke murdoch comes down to help back outside and to grant carter who gives it to brecken brecken down low no one's there has to give it out to wilden ball continues to whip for the flyers Carter puts a shoulder into Will Warner, and they're going to catch him with that shoulder. We're headed the other way. Offensive foul on Grant Carter. Yeah, frustrating for Carter. And that's just a great, long defensive possession by Snow Canyon. Without a shot clock, Dixie's taking their time, and Carter just runs into him. Just simply good heads up from Will Warner to know he's putting his shoulder down. I'm going to react to it. Make sure the official knows he lowered it. Official sees it. Now Snow Canyon, opportunity to reclaim the lead. Down 16-15. Two minutes 15 on our Nets on Fire clock. Looking over at the We Win Injury Law scoreboard. Murdoch came off a Campbell screen. Thought about a three. Instead gives it over to Meacham. Screener up top is Mackey as Meacham drives inside. Takes on two flyers. Weaves in between Lemke and gets it to go over Roberts. And those are the type of tough shots that we've seen Meacha make this year in traffic. He's great with that spin, creating some space for himself and finishing off the glass. Meacham's first bucket is Lemke. One-on-one -on -one against Campbell. They got the look they wanted, and he finishes with the soft touch. And, and really, the by far the easiest field goal attempt Lemke's had tonight. And, I mean, it's a good contest by Campbell. It's not as if you want him to overextend himself, draw a foul. Sometimes you're in a tough position, and there's only so much you can do, and that was certainly the case. Lemke going to capitalize in those moments. Lock down, Owen Mackey! Cut baseline, Will Warner finds him as he slams it behind his head. I don't know how he finished that. Unbelievable with the reverse. He hung up in the air for a lifetime waiting for that ball and had, and had the height to still finish it with the reverse jam. Are you kidding me? You don't see that in 4A games? Insane. Brecken Robinson off the back iron. No good. Carter Murdoch the rebound. Snow Canyon looking to capitalize on the energy that's flooded back into the jungle. Warner, crossover three. It's down, Will Warner. Exactly like you said, Rustin, capitalizing off the energy. You could see it in Warner. Like, I'm going to pull up from deep and take advantage of this momentum we have. Dixie looks like they've seen a ghost the last couple plays. Robinson inside, got away with the travel. Instead, we're going to have a foul. I thought the official was maybe whistling for some extra steps. That's not the case. Brecken will draw the foul. Man, I am still shell-shocked by that Warner dunk as we see Warner. that Mackey dunk. There's Warner with a deep three. He's been huge tonight. 
The inbound pass from Roberts to Brecken Robinson, not on the same page, out of bounds. That didn't even touch Brecken's hands. And with 31.7 seconds, it's a 22-18 Snow Canyon lead. And they should be able to hold, well, they will be able to hold for the last shot. Shot clocks aside, whether they're on or off, Snow Canyon can take us to the end of the second and into the locker room. Warner with a slow left-hand dribble, switches it to the right as he comes up the court. Speeds it up to avoid any type of count. Over to Meacham to Owen Mackey. Officially 20 seconds. Wilden steps up to pick up Mackey. Warner and Meacham come to meet him. Meacham gets the ball. Swings over to Bear Levitt. Now down to 10 seconds. Warner gets it back. Calls for a pick. Mackey instead sends Meacham. Driving inside. Warner tries to skip it across. It's batted away. Multiple flyers there. Carter lets it fly at the horn off the turnover. And it hits the left side of the backboard. Snow Canyon can't capitalize there at the end. Neither can Dixie. But how about that Warrior momentum? Amazing. Couple of plays. The Mackey dunk, which the crowd has been waiting for this whole game for that special play that he always seems to make. More to come in the second half, I'm sure. Will Warner hits a huge three to give him a four-point lead heading into the break. Big-time performance. Snow Canyon got up for this ball game. Dixie responded. Snow Canyon punched back in the best way with an Owen Mackey alley-oop behind the head slam. You're going to want to stay right here. We're coming up with our InfoWest halftime show, fastest internet in southern Utah. InfoWest, don't go anywhere. We'll break it down. Rustin Burnside, Andy Thompson, ESPN 97.7. We'll take a two-minute break and be back with our InfoWest halftime show.
It is the InfoWest Halftime Show, the fastest internet in Southern Utah. Check them out at InfoWest.com. Appreciate all the great local sponsors who get us on the air. And it's halftime here at the Jungle, 22-18, Warriors on top. And although we've only played a half, it feels like there's been enough emotion in this ball game to last an entire game, AT. It's lived up to the hype, big time plays. You know, the way that Snow Canyon's defended Dixie has been really impressive to me. I know Lemke's gotten his still, but they've made everything challenging, and it's just a, been a great team effort by Snow Canyon on the defensive side of the ball. Dixie, same deal. They do what they do every game regardless. Yeah, Dixie steady regardless of the outcome. They punched back after Snow Canyon got off to a nice start, but the Warriors have responded beautifully, especially behind Mackey, Am Warner, and Meacham. Guys getting it done. And speaking of beautiful plays, AT, let's roll them. We got highlights right now for our nice. viewing audience, courtesy of CEC TV. Ooh. And let's start with that pass. I huh? forgot about that. Amazing. Yeah, Roberts I drove into right into a Snow Canyon player. I thought it was over. And then he made that amazing behind-the-head pass. Carter Campbell had a huge block. It led to Cy Meacham shaking and baking inside. Dixie would counter with the old Lemke one-on-one -on -one scenario under the basket. And that is the play, T. There <laughs> it is. A play so nice that there's no way you can't consider that. Here it is in a better amazing. angle. Look at Mackey flying baseline, lobs up. Catches it, goes behind his head, and throws it down. The backwards flush for Owen. And we get all three. That's amazing. All three views there from our CEC crew as Warner drills, one from the volleyball line. But when that when that pass went up from Warner, it's just one of those things where I don't know what I what I was looking at, but I wasn't <laughs> expecting <laughs> Mackey to be hanging in the air, no. waiting, 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 and somehow still having the elevation to throw it down. I'm I'm expecting when that ball goes up, someone posted down on the block, yes. calling for the ball. It sells into their hands. They do a post move and then pass it out. It right. Amazing. Instead, Mackey flies baseline, flushes it, absolutely cans one, and uh, it got everybody here in the jungle on their feet. Momentum swung back to the Warriors. They capitalize on it, up 22 to 18. This is your Info West halftime show. Let's jump into our Wilkinson statistics, let you know who's getting it done. The Flyers, with their 18 points, only three guys wearing the blue have scored tonight so far, AT. You can tell me if you feel this is a concern or not. Lemke has 10 points. He had four in the second. He had six in the first. He leads Dixie right now. Jordan Roberts has five, one triple from beyond the arc, and John Southwick has yeah. one three to his name as well. Add those up, it'll get you Dixie's 18 points. Yeah, absolutely. It's concerning because Carter, you usually has two to three buckets a half on his own just stealing the ball and going the other way and getting easy transition buckets he's got zero and in the half court he's had nowhere to see. he's a great slasher but they've cut him off they forced an offensive foul so yeah. he's a man without a country right now as far as his role because snow canyon's being so good disciplined with perimeter defense uh, i would say uh, brecken robinson he's had a couple looks just hasn't made him. Right. He'll keep shooting. He'll be fine. Uh, Wilden can get going here as a shooter as well. But, yeah, three guys scoring. That's very atypical of how Dixie normally is. Only only can go up from here right now if you're the Flyers. Lemke got his. You know everybody else has more to offer and can do so. Snow Canyon will be keeping an eye on them. For the Warriors, the ball movement. One, two, three, four, five, six Warriors have points on the board right now for Snow Canyon. They are led by Owen Mackey and his seven. Only had three in the second quarter, but it's not as if he wasn't taking shots. He just didn't need to be that guy because the team was playing well together. You have Mackey with seven, Will Warner with two triples. He sits at six. Carter Murdoch has a three to his resume. He sits at three. And then Levitt, Meacham, and Hamlin have all chipped in two on their own accord. Amazing. You know, something we talked about in the pregame was about not just Mackey. If he has a perfect yes. game, Can't be and, you don't get, game and you don't get support from everybody else, you're still not going to beat this Dixie team. Well, right off the bat, guys coming out, going. I mean, you mentioned six different guys who have scored. Am I counting that yeah. right? And not shy. And, and Meacham, the guy I pointed to, hasn't had a great first half shooting, but he's taken good shots, and they're just rimming out. And if he just keeps pulling the trigger, he'll get to his averages of making about 40% of his threes. And so to have the, the game where it is right now, where you're up four, where I think your second best score in Meacham hasn't really gotten going yet. It's a yes. good sign for Snow Canyon. Warner's kind of made up for that as the secondary guy. 
uh, making some some long shots. So uh, both teams obviously right in this thing. And for as much as we've seen in that first half, I'm still not entirely sure what to expect in the second. Coach Meacham, Coach Roberts coaching up their squads in the locker room right now. Warriors up for 22-18 on their home floor. Let's take a two-minute break. We'll be back with some Hurst Ace Hardware Region 10 updates, let you know what's going on out at the pit as Pineview is uh, hosting Cedar and then, of course, Hurricane on the road playing Crimson Cliffs. We'll be back with those updates as we wrap up our halftime show and get ready for the third quarter. Two-minute break. Welcome back. Info West Halftime Show. Rustin Burnside, Andy Thompson here on ESPN 97.7 CEC TV. It's the Warriors up on top of Dixie 22-18 in a game that's already had plenty of highlight-worthy moments. And uh, when we picked this as the ideal home and paint game of the week, it was a no-brainer first and foremost, but it certainly lived up to all the billing. Absolutely. The, the crowd is unbelievable. The last two of these tie uh, what? The last time these two guys played each other in front of a crowd this big, it was at the Burns Arena for the state championship last year. We're weeks away from the state tournament kicking off again. We'll have all the games for you right here on ESPN 97.7. You're home for Region 10 basketball. But Snow Canyon has come out rearing and ready to go, and everybody is flying around and out Dixieing Dixie a little bit. And what Dixie does so well with their team defense Tremendous. Can't wait for the second half to get going. I'm with you there, AT. Let's jump into our Hershey's Hardware Region 10 updates. Check out all the hot buys every month at Hearst General Stores. Ace Hardware, located in the heart of St. George and Cedar City. And the best part, they're open seven days a week. Go see them whenever the heck you want to go see them. They'll be there at Hearst Ace Hardware with a variety of products with prices that please. We know right now Crimson Cliffs, Hurricane, that game is 15-14 at halftime if Max Preps is to be believed. Wow. And I know the Mustangs had some offensive issues to work through uh, after the tough loss they suffered to Desert Hills, and we know they're plenty capable. I didn't expect 15 points and a half if that score is accurate. No. Yeah, that's amazing to me. But, you know, Crimson can, you know, most of their games, they slow it down. They want to win in the 50s. And yeah. so for Hurricane, it's like, okay, we'll make it even messier, limit possessions. And maybe we can stick in this game late into the second half if it's, you know, we're in the 30s, which seems like they're on pace for right now. And I know it hasn't been the season that Hurricanes necessarily wanted, but I can say confidently the Tigers have gotten better week by week by week. And that seems to be the case, them trailing by one point against the Crimson Cliffs Mustangs. We'll keep an eye on that as we go throughout the night. And lastly, Pineview. 
hosting Cedar right now. It's the Panthers with a four-point lead in the pit. This was a one-point game last time they played. It's a four-point game at halftime right now. Prime view on top, Nash Schroeder, Griffin Shepard each have 10 points for the Panthers, and then Kreitzer has 10 right now for the Cedar Reds. That game over on Fox Sports Utah, 101.9. And if you're looking for the Utah Jazz, we'll have them shortly after our high school basketball coverage on Fox Sports Utah 1019 as well as they play the Timberwolves. Colin Sexton getting the start tonight with Mike Conley, Jared Vanderbilt, Malik Beasley headed to the Lakers and to kill Alexander Walker uh, and Mike Conley headed to the Wolves. Sorry, Mike Conley is not headed to the Lakers. Just to give you a heads up, that's D'Lo who's headed there. Third quarter action here at Snow Canyon underway. Whistle's been blown and Warriors have the ball to start with the four-point lead. Meacham spins, baseline, gets around Roberts, takes it back up to Hamlin. Warner will now get the ball and reset for this Warriors offense. Bear Levitt will catch it off a pop after he sets a screen, gives it back to Will, and Snow Canyon in no hurry. Protecting the lead, looking for the best possible shot. Hamlin swings around a Levitt screen. Inside pass to Mackey, turnaround jumper. Oh, contested split legged and he knocks it down was well, that's tough because he, he jumped up to take the shot thinking about maybe he was going to pass it to bear levitt who was cutting back door instead last second decided to pull the trigger and rolls it in that one rattling home for Mackey. he's now at nine lemke inside strong move power dribbles waits for a man to fly by and lays it in and that's something that, that bear did so good in the first half was keeping contact with lemke he's going to run the rim Run to the rim. You've got to keep your body on him as long as you can, even though it's tough. Otherwise, it gets really easy buckets like that. Three from Meacham. He has yet to hit one. That one goes off the back iron. Carter spinning inside. Beautiful left-hand pass to Brecken. Brecken fakes. Goes baseline. Nothing there. Inside to Lemke. Lemke one-on-one. -on -one, spins inside and finishes with the left hand. Awesome job by the Flyers getting Lemke in one-on-one -on -one coverage early, getting him the ball, and that is impossible to stop. Lemke, the only player so far in double digits. He's at 14. Levitt thought about a three. Hard pump fake. Lemke doesn't bite, and he swings it back to Mackey. Mackey will try to set a pick for Meacham as he comes back around up top. Nothing there. Meacham has the ball batted around, able to switch it back to Mackey. Mackey behind the back dribble. Step back jumper. Won't fall, and Lemke comes down with it off the glass. Really nice move by Mackey to break down the defender, create an open shot for him, and he knew it was off as soon as he let it go. Good job by the Dixie defense there, AT, to absolutely be aggressive, force them into a tough shot, and now they have an opportunity to tie or take the lead. Roberts floater, right hand, takes a couple bounces, ball fought for. Roberts ends up with the rebound in the midst of hands, and now will swing over to Grant Carter on the left wing. Carter, one-on-one, -on -one. Lemke going to work against Levitt. Double team comes, double team ends up in a foul, and Lemke finishes. Completely different first half. And second half, when it comes to Lemke getting those buckets point-blank range, and it's only Bear down there. Nobody's helping him, and that's why Lemke's got six early points here in the second half. And if you watch the replay, Lemke gets it inside. Levitz there has just enough time to slowly work into his shot before Hamlin comes down to help, draws the foul, but can't convert on the M1 opportunity. He's going to leave that free throw short. That was the first free throw attempt from the Flyers, if I'm not mistaken. Snow Canyon has two free throw attempts. Dixie has one. Dixie 0 of 1, Snow Canyon 1 of 2 from the charity strike. We have opposing defensive and offensive chance going on between the two student sections. Snow Canyon with the ball, Luke Hamill left hand dribble, picks it up, swings it above his head, gives it to Bear. Bear thought about going to Mackey in the post. No one's home, it ends up back outside to Luke Hamlin, who just has not been able to find one from beyond the arc tonight. Dixie off the rebound, Southwick shakes, bakes inside, Mackey hangs with him, and he has to kick it out to Carter. Carter took a while to step into a three, and it's put back in his face by Luke Hamlin. Beautiful close out there by Hamlin, as he, like you said, just was kind of flat-footed on that shot. One will go down here for him, but it's been a tough night shooting for the senior. You got swatted chance, ring through the jungle. The Snow Canyon looks to reclaim the lead, 24-24. Spinning up top is Warner. He waits for some to break down. Mackey catches the pitch. Warner just flipped it to him. Mackey pulls and hits. Beautiful. Beautiful connection between those two. No hesitation from Mackey. Knocks it down. Back and forth we go. Carter inside. Out to Roberts. Roberts sweeps inside. Swings back out to Brecken. Brecken thought about a mid-range jumper. Passes it. It's batted away. Mackey to Hamlin. Hamlin corner. Warner pump fakes a three. And now swings it back to Luke. Luke sets, three on the way. Too strong, and he's still looking for that first one. 
Now Dixie pushing. Roberts nearly stepped into one himself. Instead, unselfishly gives to Brecken. Brecken's three bounces around the cylinder, rolls out, and we do have a foul after the shot. Three doesn't go down, but they're going to get, I think they're getting Bear Levitt here. Is that right, AT? Bear Levitt hit the ground at the end of the play and the home faithful didn't like what they saw i thought Ooh. the call was on dixie well the replay cctv does a good job it looks like lemke kind of swings with that right arm plants levitt to the hardwood it's an interesting call oh. official obviously with a different angle than us so it's going to stay with the dixie flyers 27 24 snow canyon on top southwick gets it in the corner runs into murdoch and Mackey has to give it to grant carter on the wing Southwick pops back up, gets the ball, gives to Wilden, and now Roberts has it. One dribble before he sends it away. The Dixie backcourt content to move this ball around until they get the look they want, and that is Lemke. One-on-one -on -one with Campbell. Inside, dribbling inside, runs into two Warriors, patiently waiting, and he hangs and hits for two underneath. So hard. I mean, Meacham did a good job collapsing and hounding him, trying to scrap the ball last second, but Lemke so good at getting to the spot he wants. Great footwork and another easy finish for the big guy. Lemke with all of Dixie's points in the third quarter. He has eight. Corner three. Mackey bumped as he puts one up. Play stopped. I didn't hear a whistle, but I see an official with a fist up. I think Mackey's headed to the stripe to shoot three. Yeah, close out there by Southwick. They don't want to have Mackey get going. He's already made a three, and now three free throws of Southwick being helped off the floor by the trainer from Snow Canyon. Hopefully he's, yeah, he's walking it off. Hopefully he's able to get back into this game. And so far with Mackey headed to the line, it's been both teams' stars getting it done. Lemke has eight in this quarter, every point for Dixie. Mackey has five for Snow Canyon, every point for them. And you see Southwick, he was up in Mackey's shooting motion, resulting in the foul. But when Mackey came down and sold it, it looks like Southwick tumbled over the top of him. And maybe that's where he got a little shaken up. And the referees will consult behind Mackey. Have we shot a free throw yet? No. A lot of time's passed in between yeah. now. I'm just making sure. Just making sure. There's also two referees in the Snow Canyon student section. Mackey's first free throw is down. You're right. There are two referees there. One of them's wearing glasses, though. One of them is uh, what's it called? Sight impaired. Oh, he has a. He's got a. He's got a walking stick there. Mackey's second free throw takes a hard bounce. Owen now two of four from the fabulous Freddie's free throw line. We get another look, and it just looks like Southwick tumbled yeah. over the top. Hard fall. It results in three Mackey free throws, and he's one of three from the line on that trip. Mackey now with six points. Warriors up 28-26. Under four minutes to go as Roberts is on the attack. Swings one over to Damon Myers. Myers keeps it moving to Wilden. Ball continues to go around the perimeter. Carter inside. Tried to hang in the air and give to Lemke. He would have had an open two-hand flush if it wasn't for Carter Campbell getting a, ball, a hand on that ball. Excellent job by both of those guys. Getting in the way of Carter, who is one of the best slash penetrators for Dixie, but hasn't had a lot of lanes to find people passing the ball tonight. Dixie gets it in bounds. Roberts will now control. Under three minutes, Murdoch against Carter before Carter gives it to Myers. Ball continues to whip around the top before they go one-on-one. -on -one. Lemke against Campbell. Lemke looking to go to work. Murdoch acted like he was going to drop in. Doesn't. Lemke spins back inside and finishes with the right hand off the glass. And Campbell's in good position, doing a good job being physical, but Lemke is just on a roll right now off the glass. Sometimes there's nothing you can do. 28-28. Mackey got Wilden stepping in one direction. He went the other, gets to the cup, and finishes with the left hand. Yeah, good timeout here by Coach Meacham, brought to you by Dixie Chiropractic. 30-second timeout. Love Mackey just attacking, not backing down, going right at Lemke and finishing. Well, and the, the hesitation there was Mackey getting it, twitching that body in the direction that acted like he was going to go right. Wilden steps that way, anticipating, and Mackey has the speed and ability and burst to simply just go inside, finish the strong finish over the top of Lemke. And check out this stat. It's Mackey and it's Lemke who have scored in this third quarter. That's it. That's all. That's all you have. Ten points for Lemke, and then you have eight points for Owen Mackey wow. right now. Wow, look at that Lemke. Just, just five field goals. 
let the superstars go to work, hey, right? Is that what they say? Yeah, hey, that's how we hype it up. It's Mackey versus Lemke. I know the coaches the hate that. The number one, number two scorers in the 4A classification have certainly proven that here in the third. And maybe whatever team has somebody else score a bucket here in the third quarter, maybe that's your winner. We're always looking for those weird trends, right? Dixie will inbound to Jordan Roberts. Methodical dribble up the floor behind the back between the legs as he gets it into the front court. Sets the offense and waits for some things to break down. Gives it over to Myers who takes a dribble to Carter. Flyers playing a little bit of keep, keep away up top. No rush right now. Wilden works the high post. Pops back out as Grant Carter has it on the perimeter. Carter to Roberts. Roberts behind the back inside. Flips to Lemke. Lemke hesitation and goes up on the reverse side of the basket. Finishes and draws the foul. Wow, that was that was a play, AT. I, I thought a minute, maybe they got Lemke with a foot on the line. That's what I thought. No, he's in bounds. Yeah, kept his feet in bounds. Just a great give. And the free throw. And one converted for Lemke. That gives him 13 points in this quarter, 23 points on the ball game. Warner working around, gives it to Mackey. Mackey trying to back down Carter. Mackey, tough contested jumper. Won't go, good defense from Grant Carter. Ball tipped in the air. Roberts has a left hand, poked away by Christensen, and they're gonna get Christensen for the foul as he tried to slow down Jordan Roberts. Not the worst foul, as Dixie probably would have had numbers going the other way. And like you said, oh, that was, you know, tremendous defense by Carter. And good job by Mackey. Carter not to slip too far under and end up picking up a foul. Just great contest. You're spot on there. Roberts inside the Lemke against Christensen. Meacham tried to sneak around behind. Wilden had a look, and Owen Mackey sends it away. Any room that was there disappeared quickly as 24 sailed through the air. And that's two awesome leapers in Region 10. Lake and Wilden can get up. Mackey just got the best of them that time. Inbound, Lemke one-on-one -on -one against Mackey. Dribble to the right for a second, spins back inside, and a beautiful finish for Lemke's 15th point of the quarter. Unstoppable, didn't matter this time. Mackey was on him. He goes right over the top for two. He's putting this Flyer team on his back, doing it solo offensively. 33-30, Dixie with the lead, under a minute, here in the jungle. Warner working up top. He'll swing back out to Meacham. Meacham stops on a dime, drives inside, goes baseline. Flyers catch up to him, bounce pass to Christensen. Christensen down low against Lemke, doesn't see anything there. Gives it back to Will Warner, who will slow things up. Mackey now has the ball in his hands, working off a of Christensen screen. Dribbles inside, steps back three. Won't fall, but Christensen gets the rebound. And we do have a call. Looks like it's going to be against the Flyers after Christensen pulled down that board. Yeah, it looks like they'll get Lakin Wilden on a grab. That's Lakin's second foul on the ball game. Good job by Christensen setting the screen, recognizing Mackey's pulling, and then diving inside to be in an opportunity to get that ball. Meacham has the ball stripped away by Damon Myers from behind out of bounds. And now Snow Canyon will go from a baseline inbound to a side out. It'll be Warner inbounding in front of the Snow Canyon bench. Steps a little closer to Coach Meacham as the official gives him the ball. Mackey corrals it with his left hand on the inbound. Meacham gets it right above the volleyball line next to that interlocked SC. Right hand dribble pitches to Murdoch. Murdoch left hand pass to Will Warner and Snow Canyon will be patient. 20, 19, clock continues to move. Warriors obviously content to hold for the last shot. Christensen back to Will Warner as we are now officially at 10 seconds here in the third quarter. 33-30, Dixie on top. Warriors looking to cut into that lead or tie. Mackey goes to work against Carter, kicks out. Murdoch has a three earlier. Got another one to fall. Two triples for Carter Murdoch as the horn goes off. They both attack to double teamed. Mackey on the wing. He gives it off, and Carter in an instant just catch and flings it up there for another huge three to tie it up going into the fourth. And for Carter Murdoch, that's his second three on the ball game. Unselfishness from Mackey. That makes it 33-30 going into the fourth. Don't go anywhere on ESPN 97.7. 45-second break. We'll be back with the fourth.
Welcome back to the action, 33-33. If it wasn't for Carter Murdoch's corner three, only two players would have scored in that third quarter. That was Lemke with his 15 points and Owen Mackey with his eight points. Murdoch hits the three, stops it from being a two-man show, and just like that, we're going into the fourth with a tied ball game. Amazing. Uh, the question right now for Snow Canyon is, what do we do with Lemke? We yeah. contained him a little bit in the first half. That third quarter was a disaster. And right now, Lemke, 25 points. By far the leading scorer in this ballgame. How do they slow him down? We'll see what adjustments Coach Meacham made as we got spirit. Echoes across the gymnasium. Roberts over to Brecken Robinson. Into the post, one-on-one. -on -one. Lemke works so many times in the third. Works again. Dominant. Absolutely dominant. Even with Bear Levitt back in the game, who's Lemke's size, just too good. We've seen, we've seen Levitt, we've seen Campbell, we've seen Mackey, multiple guys against Lemke, the double teams, those have obviously come, but Lemke, he's been smooth with it. Meacham drives to the free throw line before giving it back to Warner. Carter fronting Mackey, steps up before he can get the ball, and it goes opposite direction to Murdoch. Murdoch has two triples in this ballgame, drives, creates, Dixie defense collapses, and it leads to a bare Levitt three. And a foul. After the shot, shots should still count. I think this happened after the fact. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a double foul. Let's see, we get a look at it right here. First of all, Bear Levitt popping off the screen, comes up, sets his feet, knocks it down. And then yeah, double foul, you're spot on there, AT. Makes it 36-35 off the Levitt triple. Down one, Jordan Roberts trots into the front court. Grant Carter acted like he was going to set a screen. Roberts goes to the other direction. Robinson pops. Corner hits his first triple of the ball game for Brecken Robinson. Heck, his first points of the ball game. Big shots galore right in down right now in Santa Clara. Brecken Robinson, who has been a killer his first one tonight. And, and how about Dixie running some type of eye formation on that left yeah. block, creating double screens to allow Brecken Robinson to pop out. Big time play from Coach Roberts. Snow Canyon looking to respond now down two. Back and forth, we continue to go here in the jungle. Mackey swings over to Meacham. Roberts picks him up with one hand in the air. Meacham drives, stops, pops, hits with the midway, mid range jumper. There it is. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good job by by Meacham, who hasn't had a lot tonight, but not settling for a jump shot, not trying to drive it all the way. Nice little stop and pop from 10 feet. Hey, I just found your Gus Johnson call of the week. <laughs> right there, Rustin Burnside calling Cy Meacham's pull-up J, the mid-range. And now we got a foul on Snow Canyon. And if you didn't know that, well, the crowd will tell you that. Probably hear it through our speakers right here in Santa Clara. It's going to be given to Carter Murdoch, his second Inbound to Roberts. Roberts pivots for just one second before spinning back to the right. Back to Myers, over to Grant Carter. Brecken off that triple. Will now give it to Roberts. One-on-one. -on -one. Levitt goes down. Lemke may have used that hand to clear space. Wow. And that's what the official says happened. Lemke picking up the foul. Wow. And I didn't see it. I, you know, uh, Levitt, yeah, maybe. Yeah, a, a small little shuck, yep. if you will. Yep. It, and right now, Dixie's crowd's going to hit him with the flopper chant. That's what you do. That's yeah. what you have to do. Lemke's been going to work one-on-one -on -one all game. If he's going to create any contact, make sure the official sees that. Cy Meacham on the other end, sets his feet, hits the triple, big-time hit. I don't think there was a single dribble on that possession. He just pulled with utter confidence. Dead eye for Cy Meacham. That's an onion shot to give his team the lead. What do we got now? Out of bounds. Wow. Yeah, Meacham went in, hit the ball. I think Snow Canyon fans are saying that hit off Lemke's knee on its way out. Instead, they're giving Will Warner a personal. And Lemke's at the stripe. Let's look at it here. CEC TV with the great angle. Lemke rolling, ball. Oh, they're calling a foul. I don't know. I missed that. That's tough. That's tough. I mean, Lemke's been so good all night that... You want to give him the benefit of the doubt. You rarely see him, see him put the ball down low. You'd rather send him to the free throw line, though, than give up another easy right. layup. Right. Lemke misses the front end. 
Free throws have not been a common sight here tonight. Misses them both. Rebound to Murdoch, and he hands it off to Owen Mackey. The Warriors now on the move. Well, more like a slow walk as Will Warner brings it up the floor. He creates motions for the offense to get moving. Carter Murdoch moving off ball, kicks out, catches it above the left wing before giving to Mackey. Mackey, wicked crossover inside. Grant Carter trying to stay in front of him is going to be called for a personal foul as he got caught slipping. And correct me if I'm wrong, Rustin, but Lemke shooting about 68% from the field. I think his free throw percentage is somewhere in the 60s as well. Yes. Dixie as a team shoots above 50%. Inbound to Mackey. He's double team. Gives it to Meacham. Warner now has it. Warriors up three. Under five minutes officially now in the fourth. Mackey pulls on a string. Rims in and out. And Dixie will have the rebound. Good look. Good pull. Just won't fall. Dixie with the rebound, gives it to Roberts. He'll slow things up as Grant Carter waits for a Lemke screen. Goes the opposite direction, cutting inside, dicing after Robinson. Meacham recovers as Brecken takes it right at side. Too strong on the hanging shot. Murdoch saves it, and he saved it to Lemke. Ball ends up in the hands of Levitt. Ball batted around, and an official steps in beforehand saying we have a kick. It's going to stay with Dixie. Is that what he's it, saying, we have a I kick? I think so. I think it was it Bear, Levitt on the ground who may have kicked it. Uh, this was just an absolute scramble. Yeah. Yeah. They're saying Levitt kicked it with that. Le well, this is what the officials see. And Levitt on the ground after scrapping for that ball. Ball ends up rolling off his left foot. And that's what the officials saw. We got a timeout on the floor. It's a full. We'll take a Dixie chiropractic timeout with a 30-second break. 41-38. Warriors on top. The energy in this game, the competition has been immeasurable. And the way I can tell that, I'm sweating up here. Maybe it's just because this game's that intense or uh, the amount of crowd that we have in this building. Either way, nothing to be ashamed of. Warm environment here at Snow Canyon High. And we're in for what should be a wonderful, fantastic finish. 41-38, Dixie trailing with the ball. Baseline inbound from Jordan Roberts. Four minutes, 32 seconds. Setting the scene for you here on ESPN 97.7. Rustin Burnside, Andy Thompson, bringing you the great color commentary tonight. Couldn't do it without him and Martin back in the studio pushing all the buttons. Appreciate everybody who makes these games happen so we can bring you moments like this because this has been a fantastic game. What we got referees, going on, AT? Referees talking to the Dixie bench. I'm not sure about what, but it looks like we're finally ready to get going here. And if I'm Snow Canyon, I'm fouling Lemke anytime he gets the ball at point blank range. Missed his last two free throw attempts. Roberts on the inbound, hesitates inside. Great look, won't fall. Lemke gets the rebound, and while he's still in the air, taps it in with a foul. Man, I, I, I don't like this call pending the replay, which, you know, we're, we have that luxury. This basically That's functions as an alley-oop to Lemke as it just misses off back iron. Wow. Uh, maybe. Maybe. It was Levitt who came inside. It will be Bear who picks up the personal. Lemke's free throw knocks it through. That's his second finished and one of the night. He's putting up monster numbers, ties it up 41-41. Snow Canyon is answered every time. Owen Mackey standing in the corner as Murdoch gets it on the left wing. Murdoch pump fakes a pass, doesn't like anything he sees there, swings it back up to Levitt who will set a screen for Meacham. Meacham curls across inside back to Bear. Bear hit a three earlier, takes this one to the rack, puts it on the floor, draws the foul. I don't think one key was ready for him, and he knocks it down with the left hand. Hasn't done that all game. We've seen him pop and make a three, and this time drive into the lane like he's George Gervin <laughs> off the glass with the left hand. Beautiful play by Bear Levitt. And Bear sets that play up by hitting that three prior. So now Lemke has to step up a little further than anticipated. Levitt puts it on the hardwood, gets inside. Big time finish, can't hit the free throw. Lemke the rebound, 43-41. After Bear Levitt got inside, he's now at five points on the night. 
sorry, seven points for Bear. Roberts inside, right hand dribble, curls baseline. Dangerous pass, Lemke went up to get it. Gives it back to Roberts. He works around Lemke's body, drives inside out to Brecken Robinson. Robinson pulls for three and drills it. Huge shot, Brecken Robinson, his second of the half. And as good as Lemke has been absolutely dominant, it's guys like that who put you over the edge in games like this. It results in an immediate timeout. Looks like it's gonna be a 30, so we'll keep it right here. All right, yep, 30 second timeout. We'll keep it right here. Dixie Chiropractic bringing you all the timeouts this year. Appreciate them. And your spot on Brecken Robinson with a big time hit. We know it was Owen Mackey scoring in the third. We know it was Lemke scoring in the third. But guys like Brecken, as we get a great look at it there on the replay, have stepped up here in the fourth when it matters. Robinson six points here in the fourth, next to Lemke's five points in the fourth quarter. And then on Snow Canyon, it's been Cy Meacham with five and Bear Level with five. Owen Mackey has not scored in the fourth. Remember yeah. last time these guys played, same it was thing. a rough fourth quarter for Owen yeah. again. He's become the defensive focus, and Snow Canyon's going to have to try to find a way to shake him free as they trail by one on their home floor. Yeah, Mackey, you know, not a great shooting night like it was the first time they played. He's had a great game still, but it's, you know, it might come down to him facilitating instead of being a scorer down the stretch. Mackey sets a screen for Warner, pops. Sweeps inside, pulls up over Southwick, gets it to go! Big time hit for Owen Mackey on the mid-range jumper. Maybe not a facilitator, maybe just keep getting <laughs> the ball and letting him knock down tough shots. That puts it back in Snow Canyon's favor. One point lead, 45-44. Lost in all the excitement is how great of a defensive battle this has been. Robinson curls, thought about a three, tried to lob it to Lemke. Good defense from Snow Canyon and Mackey has it. Warner now pushing with the right hand. Southway picks him up. Corner, Meacham, three. Left it short. Ooh. Great look for Snow Canyon. That's a 40% three-point shooter. Just won't fall. Meacham wanted the jugular on that shot. That was early in the possession. He wanted that one bad. Carter stops, swings it over to Southwick. He'll give it to Roberts. Roberts shakes, banks it. He's blocked. Will Warner went up with him, knocked the ball away, and as Southwick and Levitt go out in the corner, it's the last touch by Bear Levitt. Wow. A rare drive tonight, a rare shot attempt by Jordan Roberts, and Warner just so quick up vertically to get the block shot there. Dixie will retain possession. And before the inbound, we have a timeout over on the sideline. Dixie going to make sure they make this one count, right, AT? In a game like this, every Absolutely. possession has mattered a whole yep. awful lot. And without the, the shot clock, I mean, Dixie can go into doing what Dixie did a lot. Oh, man. Last Eagle year, stall. Four, yeah, four corners. Take the clock down. They don't have the lead right now, so they probably won't do that. But it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Well, as this game winds down. And that, that puts more pressure on Snow Canyon, to your point, to get a defensive stop because the Warriors with the lead is a dangerous thing anytime, but it's a very dangerous thing without a shot clock Yeah, because we've seen what the Flyers can do. Warriors protecting a one-point lead after the break. Dixie Chiropractic all year long bringing you these timeouts. like to thank them and everything they do. Take a timeout to Dixie Chiropractic most advanced technology and expertise in St. George and a proud sponsor of Region 10 Athletics. Roberts to inbound in front of the end of the Dixie bench. Far away from Coach Roberts, inside to Southwick. Southwick collects it against Bear Levitt. Left hand dribble up top before he pitches it back to Roberts. That's not a pitch, more of a handoff. Jordan controls and gives to Brecken. Flyers patient right now. It's a three man game. Roberts, Carter, Brecken. Southwick goes high post, he gets involved. Pass to Lemke, batted away, back to Southwick. He pulls, won't go, Lemke the rebound. He doesn't have the touch on the putback, and now we have an over-the-back foul on John Southwick. Amazing effort by Bear Levitt flying in and getting that rebound. He was guarding Southwick. Mackey was guarding Lemke on that possession. Jumped up, battled for the rebound. As we see the replay here for our TV audience. Lemke just a little bit strong on the putback, and Levitt has been, well, full throttle all night. Credit to Snow Canyon getting back after Southwick pulled that mid-range jumper. I don't think they were expecting it. How often have we seen Lemke be a little too strong under the hoop tonight? We haven't. And so that's, that's a big, big-time stop for the Warriors. On the other end, free throw won't fall, though. Dixie still not going anywhere, 45-44. 
Warriors are in the double bonus. Worth bringing up. Or sorry, just in the bonus. Mackey's banging down there with Lemke on defense. Lob, Lemke inside, Levitt, Mackey double team. Back to Southwick. Southwick takes a power dribble, kicks to Carter. Carter's three ball dead on. Facing the basket, nothing but net. Huge shot, they find Snow Canyon finally figured out something that was looking effective against Lemke with Bear being the help guy collapsing with Owen Mackey guarding, guarding Lemke down low. And then what happens? A guy who hasn't shot the ball really all night, Grant Carter gets a leak out pass okay. and knocks it down. Hasn't shot the ball all night. He's 18% from beyond the arc on the season. That was his 10th triple. We know Carter can score, but it hasn't been from beyond the arc. Big time hit for Grant Carter's 10-3 on the year, 47-45. Dixie on top. We're going to take a 30 second break. Be back with the end of the fourth quarter, 30 seconds. Welcome back to the jungle. A minute 36 on the clock, 47-45. Dixie on top after a big time Grant Carter hit. And with just under two minutes, this is where the Flyers tend to play their best basketball. But now they're on the defensive. Snow Canyon looking to tie or retake the lead. Thanks for joining us. ESPN 97.7, CEC TV. Appreciate all our wonderful listeners out there. Mackey. Pump fakes as if he was going to pass inside to a cutting Ooh. Levitt. Dangerous pass, nearly picked. Instead, it results in a Warner mid-range jumper, and he gets it to go. Onions, Will Warner. He has been tremendous. Eye of the Tiger. Huge moment, and he knocks it down. Big time finish. He could have been rattled that that pass was nearly stolen in clutch time. Instead, he smoothly navigates into the mid-range. Pulls and hits. Dixie can hold for the last shot if they want to. No shot clocks here. There's 52 seconds on the clock. No shot clock. So Roberts, as he has his back to Warner, will wait for things to kind of break down. He pitches to Southwick, and the Flyers doing what they've done for years. That three-man game up top as they let the clock tick, tick, tick. Carter. Back to Southwick, Roberts on the other end. They're working this three-man game. The pass is Aaron, it's out of bounds, and they're on their feet here at the jungle. Amazing. Southwick and Roberts on a different page. Was that Warner on the deflection getting way out in the passing lane, and they're playing four corners, and he deflects it, it deflects off Roberts' hands, and now Snow Canyon ball, because Dixie was content Ooh. to wind it all the way down for one more shot. To end the, the, you know, Snow Canyon amazingly turns it over. I, Dixie rarely turns it over in that yeah. situation. We want to keep it right here. It's a full timeout, but we want to stay right here. Don't want to miss anything. 47 47, and let's look at it here for our TV audience. Southwick dribbles, and Warner pops up doing what he's done so many times on the hardwood, on the football field, and just making Amazing. the recipient sweat. Uh, and I don't know, it was partly bad pass from Southwick, but also I don't think Roberts was fully ready for it. He had to come up above his left shoulder to try to get that ball. Full credit to Will Warner there. Yeah, absolutely. Got his hand out in the passing lane. I think got a piece of it. Really, so, really, really just shocking in that situation. Like you said, that stall ball four corner is something Dixie's been excellent at for years and it bites him a little bit there. 29.9 seconds, Snow Canyon ball after the Flyers tried to chew some clock, it didn't work out. Off the turnover, Warriors an opportunity to go up here. They will likely hold for the last shot unless they see something that's just way too good to pass up. Clock now down to 20, Meacham just barely over the front court, slow right hand dribble, Roberts steps up and the official gets Roberts for a foul. That means free throws, we're in a free throw situation. Wow. Cy Meacham's headed to the stripe. Two critical errors in a row by a team that doesn't make critical errors, the Dixie Flyers. You're sending Meacham 
one of their best shooters to go to the free throw line. I don't understand. It's it's Roberts decided to step up, put some pressure on Meacham, who was just dribbling the air out of the ball for a second there. And as Meacham went forward, he went out to stop and make contact. The official over on the left baseline saw that, or sideline saw that and said, I'm not letting that fly, not in my town. Wow. And now 17.6 seconds. Now, this sounds really stupid. Obviously, if you're the Flyers, you prefer to play straight up defense, get a stop, maybe an opportunity. Not the worst thing in the world. There's going to be two free throws. Maybe hits them both. Maybe hits one. Maybe hits and hits none. But now the Flyers are guaranteed the last shot in a tied ball game. So far from over, although that was very, very, uh, let's just say Coach Roberts probably wasn't a big fan on the sideline. No, and I think he's not a fan of, of maybe the call, the way he was reacting. Yes. That it was a ticky-tack call on the perimeter. But, I, you know, I think if you're Jordan Roberts, Snow Canyon is going to hold for the last shot. You're yeah. guarding a guy almost at half court. It's just risky to be out there and then putting your hands anywhere near the guy at that part of the floor. And we'll see if Dixie can somehow keep yeah. themselves alive with, with Meacham at the Fabulous Freddy's free throw line. Free throws have not been a big theme in this ball game. Let's say that. We've seen free throws. This is the first time either team's been in the bonus. And right now Meacham practices with the right hand as he holds the ball on his left. This one's for real. Up and through. Cy Meacham will get one more free throw as he hits the first to give Snow Canyon a 48-47 lead. Nice. You sweating right here, AT? I would be, yes. I am. 17.6, <laughs> Meacham's second free throw down. He got them both. It's a two-point ball game. And that's going to result in an immediate timeout with 17.6. Dixie gets the ball back as they trail by two. Coach's son, Jim Rat, free throws. That's the guy you want on the line in the closing seconds. Cy Meacham knocks them both down from the Fabulous Freddy's free throw line. And we've determined that if you're the coach's son, there's one thing you have to be really, really <laughs> good at, and that's fundamental. And Just the fundamental things, like free throws, right? And even if you're not... The announcer will always say yes. you are. Yes. Now Meacham happens that it happens to be true. But. <laughs> Big time hits for Cy Meacham. It was a full timeout, 49-47. At halftime, it was a 22-18 ball game. Both defenses have shown up. Offensively, this fourth quarter has been dominated by a couple different guys. Brecken Robinson has two triples to his name. Lemke, five points here in the fourth after having a 25-point three quarters he now sits at 30 on the ball game you did have Cy Meacham who stepped up in a big way he has seven including those two free throws he just knocked down Bear Levitt has five Warner with two and Owen Mackey with two in the fourth quarter alone but for Dixie you've had three guys score in the fourth you know Roberts who hasn't scored in the fourth can get that bucket you know Southwick is capable you know Grant Carter who hit a big three is capable of getting inside and now 15 seconds 14 seconds Dixie will have the last shot down two 49-47, Robinson maneuvering up top. Gives it to Carter, Carter, hesitation. Inside, left hand, strong hand. Got the roll, it's up and through. Ball nearly stolen. Ball nearly stolen on the outlet pass, but instead we have a stoppage of play. Grant Carter, hesitation dribble. His strong side is his left side. He gets to the cup and lays it up and through with contact. What? And what a finish to this game for Grant Carter, Rustin. Like yes. you said, dormant all game. Hasn't has been slow and go for Carter. He hits the huge three. And then with the game on the line, you're thinking they're going to figure out some way. They got 15 seconds to figure out a way to get it to Lemke. Instead, Carter just goes full bore and finishes through contact to get the layup to put it at 49-49. He has been clutch in the fourth, and that was a tough finish. The officials probably aren't going to give you any type of call like that in the fourth quarter, but he certainly went into the defender as if he was hoping to, at the very least, draw a foul. Instead, he gets a nice roll up and through, and we're tied at 49-49. And how about the timeout before the three seconds? Because that inbound pass, that was it a was, little yeah, muddy. It, it was. was a near steal. It was. Instead, we had a timeout. Snow Canyon will have 3.8 seconds to try to end this game in regulation. If not, over time we go, free basketball on ESPN 97.7 and CEC TV. But the Warriors with the last opportunity, they don't want that. Yeah, it looks we'll like see who the trigger man is here for Snow Canyon. If they try to 
get Mackey the ball. Oh, they're going to get it as a side out, too, yes. after the timeout. The officials discuss that. They decide side out. It's Murdoch to inbound. Hamlin, Mackey, Warner, Meacham all on the floor. Mackey. It, it, it should be at the baseline. And I think, is that what Coach Roberts is trying to argue right now? Well, He's on the floor. The, the timeout happened directly after the basket. Right. Even though the ball was inbound, a time had already been called. There must be a reason why it's not that I don't understand. And but this is a, a much better position for Snow Canyon. It puts Mackey and Hamlin at the volleyball line. Hamlin sets a screen for Mackey. He gets it, gets past front court, runs into a flyer. Ball is out of bounds, and it's off of Dixie. But that's going to put Snow Canyon in an even better position. They have less time, but they were able to advance that ball. A tough position for the referee. He doesn't want to make a call one right. way or the other and end the game with free throws. I'm glad, actually, he didn't call a foul there. No, absolutely. We don't want this game to end on free throws. Inbound, Mackey, volleyball line three. That was a clean look from Owen Mackey. The Kareens off the back iron. Over time, we go. It almost for a second looked like they caught Dixie off guard with, okay, is it going to be a foul or no? No, it's an inbound, and then they get it to Mackey right down the barrel. It was a long three, but that was a great look for Owen. Yes. That could have easily knocked that down. There were two flyers in the vicinity, but I wouldn't say they were necessarily contesting that no. shot to the fullest. That's the shot Snow Canyon wanted. Won't go, and that sends us to overtime. Let's take a 30-second break. We'll be back. 49-49, OT in the jungle. Welcome back to the jungle. It's overtime basketball. Andy Thompson, Rustin Burnside here on ESPN 97.7 and CEC TV. It's a packed house. Emotions have been flowing all night long. Both teams trading punches. It's only fitting that we go to overtime. Absolutely. It's been uh, an epic game as we thought it might be. I thought Mackey had a chance to knock that one down. He was inches away from the buzzer beating win. Dixie. Huge plays by Grant Carter down the stretch to get it to this point. I think Snow Canyon has figured out a new pers a new personnel strategy on Lemke. We'll see if they stick with it or no, they're going to go back to Bear. No, Mackey will be guarding yeah. Lemke down low. No, nope, now they switch back. It's a switch. Levitt, Mackey both trying to help down low as Dixie works it around up top. 49-49, four minutes on the clock. Now under that in the overtime. Will Warner intercepts a pass and bounces off of his chest. And rolls out of bounds. He nearly was headed Miller. the other direction. Man, he is. He's quick. I like, I, for Snow Canyon, I like that Mackey starts on Lemke and then Bear is free to come down and help. I think they've had more success in the end stages of that game with this defensive assignment. Roberts got a good look at the rim. One-on-one, -on -one, couldn't finish as he floated it up with the right hand. And now Snow Canyon with their first overtime offensive possession. Mackey gets it one-on-one -on -one against Southwick. He's been willing to distribute tonight. Gives it back to Warner. Mackey curls back out, gets the ball, sweeps, stops, pops mid-range. Took a hard bounce off the back iron. Goes back to Mackey after Levitt tapped it away. And on the ensuing push, oh. that ball's batted out of bounds. It's off Snow Canyon. Yeah, that's that. they're going to overturn this. They, they got to, right? Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Overturn back to Snow Canyon. Mackey's mid-range jumper, too strong. Levitt yeah. tipped it back to Owen, and as Owen cut inside, it went off a flyer. Yeah, his last touch by Lemke for sure. That advantage we have thanks to the replay from CEC TV. Murdoch has two threes on the game, had a look. Snow Canyon student section on their feet, putting the three in the air. He doesn't take it, instead gives it back to Will Warner. Under three minutes now. Two minutes, 55, 49-49 overtime. The number two Flyers, number four Warriors. Mackey, one-on-one -on -one against Southwick, drives wow. inside. He used Southwick to shield against Lemke and lays it in. Power move by Mackey, finishing with the left hand. 
I mean, how about using your defender to stop another defender? Great finish. Southwick, corner three. It's blocked. Bear Levitt got out to the corner and stuffed it down Southwick's throat. Man, that was a block. So many epic plays in this game. Bear Levitt has been absolutely tremendous. That's just Levitt covering floor side to side for Bear, getting things done. Lemke on the inbound to Roberts. Roberts over to Grant. Grant Carter had a big three in the fourth. Won't take one there. Robinson now inside. Gets Mackey in the air. Back to Grant. Carter for three. Short. Mackey the rebound. He pushes it to Will Warner. One-on-one. -on -one. Warner gets the lay-in as he runs the floor. What a pass ahead by Mackey and Warner keeping his feet. He nearly got clipped on the heel and almost fell over, but kept his feet through contact and gets the layup. And the basketball recognition from Mackey to recognize his teammate was gone. Throw it up, let him get it done like a receiver streaking down the field. Mackey collects it and lays it in. It's 53-49. Snow Canyon on top, full timeout. Woo! This game's lived up to the hype. We'll take a 30-second break and be back with the end of overtime. It's the Warriors 53, Flyers 49. Big time performance for Snow Canyon in this overtime period. Not too different than how they started this game off in the first quarter. Aggressive defense, controlled offense, and then of course Will Warner running the floor. Absolutely, and you, you your mark how great it was of, of Mackey who could have thought, oh, I got a two and one opportunity. No, as soon as he got the steal, he knew Warner could go get it and finish. Carter in the corner, his team down by four. They need a bucket under two minutes. A minute 53 on the clock. Brecken Robinson now has it on the right wing. He's going to drive left hand, swings back out to Grant Carter, who gives it to Southwick. They're trying to find that post. It's Mackey against Lemke as a three by Robinson. Up and miss. Long rebound goes to Brecken. Brecken kicks back out to Jordy Roberts. Roberts swings it over to Robinson, who drives baseline back to Jordan on the opposite corner. Roberts is picked up. Good defense by Snow Canyon. Levitt tries to draw an offensive. Nothing there. The pass is intercepted by Will Warner. Not enough momentum. Mackey down the floor. Euro steps and lays it in. Amazing. Incredible defense by Snow Canyon, forcing Dixie into positions that they haven't been a lot this year and turning the ball over. Owen Mackey have a game. Robinson three. He's fouled. They're down six, they needed a bucket, and Robinson, rule number one, don't foul the jump shooter. Yeah. Robinson headed to the stripe for three potential free ones. And Snow Canyon bails him out here because I thought Dixie in that previous possession was too hesitant to pull the trigger. A, tuple, a couple times they had open looks, and instead they pump faked and drove and kept passing it around to the point where they turned the ball over. Yeah. And now Robinson will have a chance to get him back in this thing from the fabulous Freddy's free throw line. At the line, Brecken, his first free throw attempts of the night, if I remember right. And he knocks down the first one. Robinson, only six points in this ball game. But it, that's a much needed one. It's the first point of the overtime period for the Dixie Flyers. Second free throw, rims in and out. He's one of two with one more upcoming. This will cut it to a four point game. Dixie cannot make it a single possession game without an offensive rebound right now. A minute seven on the clock. Robinson's third free throw, down. He's two or three on that trip. Brecken Robinson now eight points on the ball game. A minute seven, Snow Canyon with possession. And the Warriors have to be in no rush here, right? Uh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. But don't get so flat footed and stall ball that you turn the ball over. And Warner takes your advice. He pushes that ball into the front court, gives it back to Murdoch. Murdoch hesitates before giving it to Meacham. Now officially under a minute. 57 seconds on the clock. Ball batted away. Lemke took away Meacham's pass. Lemke one on one against Mackey. Gets it to go as he uses that left arm to shield. Two point ball game. 
Warner still to Meacham. Dixie nearly had an opportunity. Mackey tripped up over to Murdoch. Warriors playing keep away. Murdoch over to Will Warner. Dangerous possession, somehow oh saved. My. Snow Canyon protecting a two point lead. And Damon Myers comes over and puts Luke Hamlin on the floor to pick up the personal. Oh my gosh, crazy sequence where it didn't, it looked like Dixie was gonna get a steal there. Mackey down in the free throw line. He seems to twist his ankle, falls to the ground. The nightmare scenario potential there for Snow Canyon. They survived it and now got Hamlin at the free throw line. This is the game that the good people paid admission to see, yourself included, Absolutely. AT. Hamlin at the free throw line, his team up 55-53. He struggled from beyond the arc tonight, but the free throw line could be a different story. It's not. Rebound goes to Carter Murdoch. Snow Canyon gets an offensive rebound when they need it most, and Murdoch will now go to the stripe. All right. A rare offensive rebound against the Flyers. Off the long miss by Hamlin. We'll see if Murdoch, who's been money from the corners, can make one right down the barrel here. Murdoch, too strong. The only good thing is they are in the double bonus after that foul. So Murdoch will have one more regardless. He can make this a three point game. Big time free throw. 27.3 on the clock for Dixie to work with. Second free throw. Up. Rattles in and out. It's still a two-point game. Dixie with the ball. Just when it looked like the Flyers were dead in the water, they have an opportunity. Roberts nearly lost the ball. Whew. He wanted to yeah, attack. That, he wanted to get inside. That was interesting because he got everybody over to the left for an ISO opportunity for himself to yep. go right and drive mid-drive. Coach calls the timeout says, whoa, let's think of something else. It looked like a similar play that resulted in the fourth quarter in a Brecken Robinson three. When they ran this weird stack on the left side, yeah. Roberts either had ISO or passed it to the corner yeah. for a three, and instead Coach Roberts whistles and, for timeout. And I don't blame Coach Roberts because Dixie's always one of the best inbound teams in the region as far as designing a play that it gets an easy bucket. Um, and we'll see if they're able to get the ball somehow to, to Lemke or Carter slashing towards the rim. But... Uh, Man, I can't, I, you know, I can't believe Dixie's in this position where they're only down two with the ball after Snow Canyon was up by six. It was 55-49. Time was against them. A variety of things would have to go in their favor for it to work. Lemke had a big time steal that he ended up laying up and in. Snow Canyon misses some big free throws, and the Flyers still breathing. They're about to leave the huddle over on the Dixie sideline. Snow Canyon has already left theirs. Bear Levitt, Owen Mackey, Cy Meacham, Carter Murdoch, and Will Warner will make up the Snow Canyon defense. Offensively for Coach Roberts and the Flyers, it's Brecken Robinson, Kyle Lemke, Grant Carter, Jordan Roberts, and John Southwick all on the floor right now. 18.7 seconds in overtime. Snow Canyon up 55-53 on the defensive on their home floor. Flyers in danger of losing their first region game of the year. Roberts with the baseline inbound. Looks for Lemke. Instead, it goes to Southwick. Beautiful play design. Won't go. Bear Levitt has the rebound. Snow Canyon trying to dribble out the clock. Will Warner's foul. And that was the best. That was probably the best inbound play you could have ran. Missed opportunity for the Flyers. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, just what we were talking about. All eyes on Lemke. Fake the pass there. Go to Southwick. And the poor kid just was a heck of a player. Just misses the bunny. Just a sophomore, he had a three in the first quarter, had an opportunity, no one was expecting it. Great look, doesn't work, Levitt the rebound, Warner's fouled, and now Will Warner knocks down the front end. 56-53, he can make it a two possession game with 12.3 seconds. Second free throw through! It is a four point ball game, Flyers have to hurry. Roberts waits for the ball, picks it up at the midcourt, nearly loses it, will lose it, Warner's on it, ball's tied up, and we're going to have a jump ball. It's going yeah, Snow Canyon's Canyon way. Ball. Yeah, just got out of sorts, a little too much in a hurry maybe. Uh, I think it was a situation where Roberts, he's trying to save as much time as possible, so he doesn't corral that ball yeah. early, it rolls too far, he misestimates when to pick it up, and by then, 
Snow Canyon's already all over. Yeah. Inbound to Meacham. Quick foul from Roberts, and Cy Meacham potentially can put this ball game away. Amazing. And, and Meacham and Warner making free throws. Previously, they weren't making their free throws, but if you're Snow Canyon, you want Will Warner. You just knock down two, and Meacham, in this case, put the game away for you. Big-time opportunity for Cy. Will Warner already did his his job by knocking down two. And you're going to have to talk the rest of this game because my voice is gone. <laughs> I can power through it. 57-53. Meacham, an opportunity to add one more nil to the coffin that would be Dixie's first region loss. That one in and out for Cy. Misses it. Still 57-53. Cy, both hands at his side. Wipes his hands on his shorts as he gets the ball. Practices with that right hand ball tucked in his left. Second free throw after a couple dribbles is up and through. Cy Meacham will get one of the two. And with 6.5, Roberts lets the ball roll forward. Picks it up. They got to hoist a shot quick. Roberts contested three off the back iron. Snow Canyon bats it around. Southwood has it. Doesn't get a shot off in time. It's the Warriors. Snow Canyon wins 58 53 in overtime victory. Big time moment. They crowd the floor over the SC, bumping into police officers as they mosh pit here in the jungle. Big time win, AT, for Snow Canyon, for the program, and really a win that could upset the hierarchy of Region 10. So many epic moments for both of these teams in this game. Nothing to be ashamed of for Dixie. They had big time gutsy plays that kept them in this game, but clearly just Snow Canyon's night. They survived a bunch of comebacks and turnovers and missed free throws to hang on and win the game. Snow Canyon, it's jubilation here on Santa Clara. Warriors get it done, 58-53. This was your ideal home and paint game of the week, but don't go anywhere. We have the Johnson Pediatrics Post Game Show on the way. Closing highlights for our TV audience, thanks to CCTV. You just witnessed one of the best games of the year. Overtime victory for Snow Canyon as they advance to 8-2 in region play, 15-7. On the year, the Flyers now 18 and three, eight and one, first region loss for the Flyboys. 58-53 is the final. Three minute break. We'll be right back with our Johnson Pediatrics post game show, and we'll get you all the stats, the highlights, and what went on throughout the rest of Region 10 after this three minute timeout.
It's the Johnson Pediatrics postgame show here at Snow Canyon High School. The Warriors performing in front of the hometown faithful with a clutch, clutch victory. And for our TV audience, we don't want to keep them too long, so let's just break it down real quick. Snow Canyon took every single punch Dixie threw at him. It ends up in overtime, and when it looks like the Warriors will walk away with a comfortable victory, Dixie makes him sweat one more time. But it doesn't matter, Snow Canyon with the clutch victory, and the Warriors so often this year have been the cool, calm, composed team in clutch situations. That was Snow Canyon tonight. Absolutely. And in a game where it wasn't Mackey's best game by any means. He had a he, he always has a great game, but yeah. this was a game where a bunch of other guys really needed to step up to get them over the top, and they did. And the crowd was awesome, and the defense was awesome, and Lemke, the, uh, the star on the other team, was beyond dominant in that second half especially, and somehow you, you got the win. So Coach Meacham and his guys have got a, a ton to celebrate tonight. They absolutely do, and for CCTV, they've been giving us the greatest angles all night long. I think they got some highlights to roll for us in the second half, starting in with Owen Mackey, turn around Jay to start the third quarter, contested. We saw him hit multiple of those shots, and speaking of contested shots, it was Lemke dominant all night long, but they really kind of took him away when it mattered most. Snow Canyon's defense adapts. They, they did. They, they put Mackey on him down low with Bear Levitt collapsing, which kind of made it more difficult for him to get the ball in good position. Here's Lemke still continuing to be dominant. He would finish with 32 points for Dixie inside, going to work. Warner over to Mackey. Mackey, quick step, gets Wilden slipping, finishes up over the top of Lemke. This was one, another great dime from Roberts. He had the behind-the-back pass. This one's a laser to Lemke, who finishes with the and one. And, of course, another Lemke finish, this time with the left hand. There's Carter Murdoch with just a catch and bang to end the third quarter. That was huge. Massive shot from Murdoch. It was Lemke on the other end. Swipes his fist as he heads the other direction. Brecken Robinson off this play that Coach Roberts drew off. Pops out, hits his first three of the ball game. He would finish with eight points on the night. He was absolutely huge. There's a nice shot by Meacham. Pull up Jay from the free throw line. And speaking of nice shots, after the pull up Jay, Meacham set his feet for three. Didn't dribble, didn't hesitate, just pulls and hits. Lemke would get an and one on this put back attempt uh, to really kind of put things more in favor of Dixie but the Warriors would eventually answer on the other end. Yeah, Brecken Robinson with a couple of huge threes late in the game. And there's Meacham with a pull-up, or excuse me, uh, Mackey. I should remember that guy's name. And how about clutch? Grant Carter, 18% on the year, squares away, knocks down a three to give Dixie an advantage that was immediately answered by Will Warner's pull-up mid-range jumper and this is where we just went back and forth trading blows these highlights give you an idea of how back and forth this game was this is the overtime period as Will Warner runs the court gets the lay-in absolutely and the, the game was over and then Dixie was able to battle back had a shot to tie it up on the inbounds play and just missed a bunny really well executed it feel bad for the Flyers for missing that one, but um, it was you know just the magic in the air in the jungle. Sometimes those ball, those shots don't go in for you. Well, Dixie gave themselves every opportunity to win, and on top of that, Snow Canyon took care of business in all facets of this ball game. Great performance from the Warriors. They did not shy away from the bright lights, especially after that letdown at the hangar where they had an opportunity to win. So, big time W for the Snow Canyon Warriors, and for everybody out on the floor right now. It's celebration time. Let's do this. Let's take a one-minute break. Be back to hand out some awards on our Johnson Pediatrics post-game show. We'll let our TV audience get on with their night. Appreciate CCTV and all the work they put in and everybody behind the scenes who makes it happen, gives us great highlights, gives us great angles. Do a one-minute break and be back on the radio side to continue with our Dr. Cody Johnson and staff pediatrics post-game show. <laughs> 